Hello there friends, welcome to my first Black Desert Online class guide and today we're going to be focusing on the sorceress. I'm going to be saying Sork a lot because I don't want to say the whole entire name throughout this whole video. So I'm not going to explain every single skill that the Sork has and what it does, but I will explain what the skills in this specific build that I made do and how they combo with each other. So I'm going to call this the Leech build for Sork because this build eats away a lot of mana. If you can't afford mana pots, you can't have mana pots on you at all times, this build will just not work. I suggest you at least keeping 50 plus mana pots on you because you never know when you're going to get PK'd or when you're going to have to do some GVG. Now the reason you're going to need so many mana pots is because even if you're not running with this kind of setup for a Sork, this class uses a ton of mana and as far as gaining mana back it's just not the best. Some of the skills that the Sork has that does gain mana back is like Shards of Darkness which is one of your main buffs and then you have your basic attack. But for this build, basic attack is shit, we don't even need it, it's too weak and we want to go for the stronger stuff so having mana pots at all times just eliminates trying to get mana back the slow way and using shitty attacks. We're going to go with the powerful attacks in this one and the con of that is using a ton of mana pots so for this build as you can see i barely use any dark splits one very important thing in this game is knockdowns because knockdowns help you pull off powerful combos without being stopped and at the same time they combo with down attacks if you guys don't know what down attacks are there are many different kinds of attacks in this game there are back attacks counter attacks down attacks air attacks and speed attacks and then there are different status effects as well which are bounce knock down faint rigid knock up grab knock down smash and air smash for the sork you usually use knockdowns and bounce and you usually use down attacks and air attacks you do have a few speed attacks in there a little bit of counter attacks but for this build it's mainly going to be down attacks air attacks and knocking your enemies down and making them bounce so i'm going to run you guys through the build that i have and i'm also going to link it in the description the link in the description is the final build which will require you to be level 55 and have a shit ton of skill points now in the game i'm only level 50 and i don't have enough skill points to finalize this build but you guys get what i'm going for this build can even help you at earlier levels and you can just build up to the final build and feel free to mix it up yourself if you don't like some of the stuff i added in there We're not going to go past the C rank with Dark Split because like I said, it's a weak attack and it helps you gain back mana and for this build we're relying on mana pots. In the case that you're doing some PvE though, it is safe to have at least Dark Split built up to the last part of C rank and Flow of Darkness because it does help you get some mana back and it also helps increase your evasion. But we're barely going to use those skills. So the next skill we're going to build into is going to be Midnight Stinger, which can then go into Eruption of Guilt. I prefer the Eruption of Guilt Road, or Path, if you may call it. Um, and we're going to use this because it helps us close the gap with enemies, it does some decent damage, and it also boosts your crit rate plus 18% for 10 seconds. Boosting your crit rate is important, and it is important to keep your crit rate going while you're playing with this build, especially in PvP. The other skill that you want to use that also helps boost your crit rate is Sinister Shadow. And Sinister Shadow is like a, a really basic attack. It's just you using the right mouse button and moving left to right. Now this is something you're not going to rely on for damage, but you're going to use it when you need to boost your crit rate plus 18% for 10 seconds. I don't believe that these two skills stack, so it's really only going to be one. As you build them more and more, they start boosting for 30% crit rate, so it gets even better with the build. Now speaking of buffs, you also want to roll with Shields of Darkness, because this skill eventually can help give you plus 13 DP for 5 minutes. This is very important to keep up because it makes you even more tanky. Another buff you're going to have, which every Sork is going to have, is Shards of Darkness. So Shards of Darkness is only something that a Sork can have, and it's this little icon that you're going to see by your health bar, mana bar, and eventually at level 50 it's going to go up to 30. So every 10 is considered a Shard of Darkness, but as you can see it's 30. So 30 equals 3 Shards of Darkness, but equals 30 Fragments. And as you level up this Shards of Darkness skill, the more fragments, the more shards you can have, eventually giving you a max of 30 fragments. At 30 fragments, you have plus 30 attack for 20 seconds. But that's not just what's important about this. It gives back mana, yeah, that's okay. But the main important thing about this is that it buffs your allies as well. So when you're in group fights and you use this Q, I use it more for my homies and not me because it buffs their attack and makes them even stronger, making us a better team. Alright, so let's talk about the knockdowns. I told you guys that this class 
is all about the knockdowns, the down attacks, the bounce, the air attacks, but mainly down attacks and knockdowns. So some of your main knockdown skills are your ultimate dark flame, which is something you use after Claws of Darkness. And also you have Shadow Eruption and Ultimate Shadow Eruption, which inflicts bounce on your enemy. And then you have Dream of Doom, which is one of your main nukes, and we'll get into that later, but that knocks down a group of enemies and is very important. So speaking of nukes, you have some really, really powerful attacks with this class. You have Shard Explosion, which is my favorite skill. As far as the animation goes, I don't like it much, but this attack has 100% crit rate and accuracy. It is a fucking nuke. You only really want to use it when you have 30 fragments or 3 shards of darkness built up, meaning that you're at your max and you're going to do the most damage that you can. This can destroy a group of enemies, it's the best for AoE farming, and it is one of your best nukes. It can be cancelled while you're trying to use it if an enemy hits you or knocks the shit out of you. I also spoke of Dream of Doom. Dream of Doom is very important. It has a 10 second cooldown so you can use it frequently. It does drain a lot of mana, it does a ton of damage, and it knocks down a bunch of enemies allowing you to use down attacks next and follow up with whatever you need to. Now you can end up turning this into imminent doom which allows an instant cast. You don't have to charge it up, but for me the cast time isn't even all that bad. But if you want to use it instantly, remember that it's going to have a 30 second cooldown instead of a 10 second cooldown. So it's no rush to build into imminent doom until you have so many skill points you don't know what to do with them and then it's just like, I'll go with that in my opinion. You also have bloody calamity, which I don't have this skill unlocked yet, I can't wait to do it. But this attack is also considered a down attack. So after knocking down your enemies, maybe hitting them, knocking them down with the Dream of Doom, you can follow up, close the gap with some kind of move, or use your Night Crow, and then use Bloody Calamity, which also has a 100% chance of critical hit, does a ton of damage, recovers HP, and like I said, it's a down attack. Your main skills for DPS, as far as just doing damage when you have those opportunities, when you're not trying to knock down your enemy or when your enemy is knocked down, when you're not busy closing the gap or running away, are Claws of Darkness and Dark Flame and Abyssal Flame for range. You also have Crow Flare and Beak Kick. So all of these are melee attacks except for Abyssal Flame. And Abyssal Flame is something you want to use when you're long range. It does have cast time. It also recovers some HP. And it is also a down attack. So it does more damage when your enemy is knocked down. Now this is the main reason why this class drains a lot of mana. Claws of Darkness is your, pretty much your basic attack now with this specific build, and this takes a lot of mana away. And it does a ton of magic damage, and it has up to 9 hits on it once you put it into its final form. It also decreases your enemy's movement speed, and it's considered a down attack so it does more damage when your enemy is knocked down. So when your enemy is knocked down and you're not using your nukes, you're going to rely on Claws of Darkness. Ultimate Dark Flame is kind of considered a nuke in my opinion, and this skill is so good because it has front guard while casting. So while casting this skill, people can't really do damage to you because it has guard on as you're doing it. Now Dark Flame is also considered a speed attack and an air attack, so this means if you attack your opponent while they're knocked into the air, it will do more damage, or if your enemy is charging at you and you use this attack, it will do more damage. So that's what a speed attack is. If your enemy's charging at you and you use an attack with speed attack, it will do more damage. Now I talked about Crow Flare and Beak Kick, which are good kind of basic attacks. They do magic damage and they decrease your target's attack speed. This class also has some skills that puts a dot on your enemy, meaning damage over time. Signs of Agony is one of those, and I think this is a really good skill to build into, not only because it can hit multiple targets, especially in its final form, it can hit up to 7 targets, but it inflicts 30 pain damage per 3 seconds for 27 seconds, so your enemies will be taking damage over time. At the same time, it gives you a lot of fragments of darkness, because you gain 2 for each enemy hit which makes this such a good skill. This is something I don't rely on for damage, but I'll use it in the fight or at the start of the fight. Also, your ultimate dark flame can inflict 15 burn damage per 3 seconds for 36 seconds on your enemies. This class is very mobile, and you have Nightcrow, which are your iframes. This prevents you from being able to be hit. If you don't know what iframe stands for, it stands for invincibility frames. So you can't get hit while you use this. That's why Nightcrow is something good to build into. It makes you extremely mobile. You can get out of fights. If you get caught by surprise, somebody's trying to PK, you can get out real quick, get your shit together, and decide what you're going to do next. Now, this consumes stamina, but if you still need to get away or need to use your Nightcrow iframes, you can use this passive crow food, which then consumes one shard of darkness to perform Nightcrow. Now one shard of darkness is 10 fragments of darkness. So this is kind of a good and bad thing because sometimes you may use it one extra time and you just took away a ton of your shards. But we also have a ton of attacks which help build us shards back. 
In PvP, this doesn't bother me so much because I'm using so many different skills, but when I'm doing PvE and trying to AoE a bunch of mobs, sometimes I'm like, oh shit, can't use shard explosion like I wanted to because I ended up consuming all my shards using this crow food passive. That's just one of the cons for me. Guess I gotta get good. The sexiest skill in my opinion is Black Wave and I love this skill to death. Black Wave can be used up to 5 times in its final form and it can hit up to 7 targets. It's also a down attack so it multiplies the damage by 1.5 when an enemy is knocked down. It has a 10 second cooldown, I find myself trying to spam it all the time and when it's on cooldown I end up using Abyssal Flame, but you know that's not so bad because that's also a down attack so if I was going for a down attack well I just followed up with another one. The thing is this doesn't have cast time, it's instant and it does a shit ton of damage. Very good for AoEing mobs or if you and your friends or your guild just knock down a bunch of enemies or one enemy, Black Wave can melt the shit out of them and I love this skill to death. So for the basics of this build, you have your knockdowns, ultimate dark flame, shadow eruption, dream of doom, Russian crow. You have your buffs to help you gain crit, midnight stinger, and sinister shadow. You have your nukes, shard explosion, dream of doom, and bloody calamity. You have your main DPS skills, claws of darkness, dark flame, abyssal flame. Then you have your mobility stuff, which is night crow. And also you can sometimes push yourself back with dark flame, ultimate dark flame. And you also have Midnight Stinger, which helps you close the gap. Ultimate Dark Flame can also be used for that as well. You have your buffs, which is your Q, which can also buff your allies, attack while consuming Shards of Darkness. And you also have your Shield of Darkness, which helps give you DP, which you want to maintain this as much as you can. You have your down attacks, Abyssal Flame, Claws of Darkness, Bloody Calamity, Low Kick, Black Wave, and your air attacks, Crow Flare, Beat Kick, and High Kick. We're never going to use Low Kick or High Kick. Those are complete shit compared to Crow Flare and beat kick in this build, so there's really no point in using those. When it comes to gearing as a sorceress, it's really preference. People can tell you what you should be wearing, what you should be doing, but it really is preference. If you press the P tab, you can see that you have attack speed, casting speed, movement speed, critical hit rate. What do you want to build into? Do you want to build into critical? Do you want to build into more movement speed, casting speed? So I went with the Ejirian set because I like the stats that it has, how it gives you more HP and attack speed and casting speed because Sorceress is a caster and you know I want to get that casting down as much as possible. And then I chose the boots. Now the reason I chose these Xerath shoes is because you only get a 3 piece set bonus from most armors, if not all armors, so why have 4 pieces of the same set when you can mix it up? So I went with the 3 piece Ejirian and then the Xerath shoes for the endurance or stamina if you want to call it because that means more iframes and more escaping attacks and that means I can run longer so you know now for the weapon people can say Laverto or Yuria now you have to think Laverto is hard as fuck to get and even if you do acquire Laverto you gotta get it plus 15 if you really want to be the boss right and to get a Laverto weapon plus 15 well if you want to repair the max durability you would have to get more Laverto weapons which is way too expensive or farm memory shards like crazy and that would require so many memory shards some people can get lucky and get the plus 15 without many fails because they fail stack other weapons but that's still messing with RNG I mean some people get a plus 15 at plus 10 fail stack some get it at plus 30 so just imagine how much you would have to fuck with RNG just to get a plus 15 Laverto. Also on Reddit, there has been many comparisons and arguments about which is better, Yuria and Laverto. I've came to the conclusion that Yuria is perfectly fine, if not better, when it comes to PvP. So, personal preference again. And then, as far as accessories, I'm going with all AP accessories. I still need to replace my belt, but all AP for me. You can get these earrings and rings from certain quests, but we're not going to get into how to acquire this armor. Like I said, it's personal preference. If you want to go attack speed, casting speed, I would suggest the Ejirian set, and for more endurance, Xerath shoes. For weapon, Yuria amulet, and for secondary, Helric talisman because of the accuracy. Accuracy is very important, if not more important than AP at a certain point, because even though you may have hella attack it doesn't mean that you're going to do a lot of damage to your opponent because you need accuracy to land those attacks if you pay close attention when you're doing pvp you will see just how many attacks you actually miss but if you're using something like a hellric talisman that gives you a ton more accuracy especially when you upgrade it or enchant it then you will be landing most of your attacks so more attacks that connect or less attacks that connect but those attacks that do connect do more damage I would go for the more attacks that connect but do less damage because over time you're going to do more damage with those attacks. Anyway, so that's as far as gearing and as far as costumes, I mean you want to get the sexiest underwear on the market. I'm just kidding. 
it's up to you guys. So play how you want. I hope you enjoyed this build. It's called the Leech Build. Share it if you want to give your friends a Sorceress build. And sorry for this long ass video, but I just tried to break it down as much as possible for you guys. Like the video if you've made it all the way to this point and it helped you out in the slightest. And subscribe for more Black Desert content. I will see you guys in the next video.